part for Bush and problems with the elections. What is at stake for me is that we ensure that all get to vote and that votes cast are not manipulated in any way. There is no representation if this basic right is removed. The thought that the Republicans would stoop so low as to deny a vote cast or to change it is to subvert the possibility for truth. Whatever the outcome of a free and fair election it allows for all to participate. The milieu of a place where all have said their peace with that small all important means is to ensure that our society is operating with all its capillaries and veins and that from every part of the body politic a sense of the health and welfare of the state is attended to. The aorta carries blood from the heart to all the organs and structures of the body. The vote is the blood coming back to the heart for an oxygenation of the needs and wants of a people. To deny that return is to stop the flow and a part of the heart dies and no heart can run for long or with much vigor without all of its major systems and byways acting in full concert. All of our voices, whether Republican, Democrat, Green, Libertarian, Constitution, Alaskan Independence Party, Aloha Aina Party, and the list goes on, almost as diverse as our individual representation of selves need to be heard. No one must go without a voice or access to the heart for its oxygenation for its best how all of life sustaining information does to the health of the entire body. And for this reason, the means to justify an end to our voting rights, as with the implementation of electronic voting machines that can be infiltrated digitally or by registering people to be Republican when they want it to be Democrats, or any other means to a single party's end, let that not be the end we seek. But let us allow for every man or woman citizen his or her voice, which is his or her vote. 1. Jeremy Wallace said that the loss of some 18,000 votes in Sarasota, Florida, where touchscreen voting took place, is an impetus for lawmakers, such as Senator Dianne Feinstein, who as chairwoman of the Senate Rules and Administration Committee, which has jurisdiction over federal election regulations will, reintroduce legislation in the new year to require all voting systems to have verifiable paper trails. 2. Robert F. Kennedy Jr. said, Congress, always ready with funds for needy industries, swiftly authorized $3.9 billion to upgrade the nation's election systems, with much of the money devoted to installing electronic voting machines in each of America's 180,000 precincts. But as midterm elections approach this November, electronic voting machines are making things worse instead of better. 3. In a November 1, 2006 report by Michael Janowski entitled, Diebold Demands HBO Cancel Documentary on Voting Machines, reveals the absurdity of Diebold's demands in that they call the HBO film, unfair and inaccurate, and yet the film proposes that, Diebold voting machines are in tamper-proof and can be manipulated to change voting results. 4. Dan Balls and Zachary A. Goldfard said that during the NOV. 7th election, more than 80% of voters used electronic voting machines. They said, human blunders and technological glitches, in Maryland, caused long lines and delays in vote counting. This followed ones earlier this year in Ohio, Illinois and several other states, have contributed to doubts among some experts about whether the new systems are reliable and whether election officials are adequately prepared to use them, according to Balls and Goldfarb's article. Major Problems at Polls Feared, Washington Post, 17 September 2006. 5. Rob Hall said Ohio voting rights activist and attorney Bob Fatrickis believed that massive voter purges in Democratic precincts may have already won Ohio elections. That was in October. As it turned out, Ted Strickland beat J. Kenneth Blackwell by approximately 24 but only 4 million out of the 11 million inhabitants of Ohio voted. 6. Patrick Walters said that, voter advocates filed a lawsuit Tuesday seeking to stop Pennsylvania counties from using, paperless, electronic voting machines, saying that such systems leave no paper record that could be used in the event of a recount, audit or other problem. Walters also said in the article titled, Pennsylvania sued over electronic voting machines, that, the lawsuit alleges that certifying paperless electronic voting machines violates the state's election code and constitution. 7. 
David Dill, Doug Jones and Barbara Simons said, Computer security expert Harry Hursty revealed serious security vulnerabilities in Diebold software. Computer scientist and voting system examiner Michael Shamos in Pennsylvania said, It's the most severe security flaw ever discovered in a voting system. Dill, Jones and Simon said that, basically, Diebold included a backdoor in its software, allowing anyone to change or modify the software. Bush and upsetting the balance of power in the region given Iraqi intervention. Associated Press reported on Wednesday, December 13, 2006, that Saudi Arabia has expressed concern that once U.S. troops leave Iraq that the controlling Shiite majority could massacre the Sunni minority, believed to comprise a large faction of the deadly insurgency that has claimed thousands of Iraqi civilian and U.S. military lives. The report also revealed that the Saudis are not happy with proposed talks between the U.S. and Iran.